Welcome, this is the 3.1 Ready, Set, Go homework solution for the IM1 Honors class. Here we have the ready part. It says graph each of the function, name three of the points that lies on each of the graph. Choose a scale for your graph that will make it possible to graph your three points. So we have this. What I did is I went to Desmos and I enter it in 2x plus 5 automatically graphs it for me shows me a good enough scale All right you could zoom in you, you see how you could still see it so you could always go up by twos right or you can go up by five you could zoom it in more right you you could see how you could always almost go up by one okay All right that's how that's what I did the three points that I got were the intercepts and there's also that part there good the next one same process I plugged that into decimal so let me show you that again one more time okay that would have been 4 minus 3 X right I could zoom in a little bit more right looks like fives is good five is looks like five is a good scale right you could also go up by two looks good right the reason why they ask you to make sure that you put in a scale is to make sure that you can graph it appropriately all right okay and the points that i have here was the y-intercept and x-intercepts right i could always go up by one as well because the, one of the intersections is one one next one it looks exponential here right so for the exponential one, I graphed it here. Same thing, like in Desmos. Five parentheses, three to the power of x, right? Do you see how it goes up? All right, I zoom in. I went up by two each time. And the question asked me to find three points, but I would have to go to Desmos. I only found one good point. It was the y-intercept. It was good enough. Next one, same thing. This is this looks exponential, right? Exponential increasing. The y-intercept was 0, comma 4, right? Next one, function of v, vt, right? This was linear. As well, okay. The y-intercept was 0, comma negative 4, and one more of the good points was 2, comma 1. That decimal made it really ugly. Next one looks exponential. 8, 3 to the power of x. The next section here, 0, 8, again, because that's the 0th term, right? Good. All right, set. For each graph, give match it to the context description that fits, then label the independent and dependent axis when appropriate with the appropriate values. Okay, here I didn't label the x or independent or dependent, but my explanation gives it, all right? So here the domain would be discrete. And the slope here looks like it's increasing and decreasing. So the situation must be continuous and it has to be something increasing and decreasing. The one I got is the, the amount of money in a saving account where regular deposits and some withdrawals are made. The reason why is because the amount of money is continuous because you could have $1.5 and withdrawal makes it a decreasing slope and a deposit would make would have an increase in the slope. Okay. 8 the domain here is continuous the slope is increasing some parts are flat and I have e the amount of mileage recorded on a denominator of a delivery truck over a period of time the reason is time is continuous we could have 1.5 seconds 1.5 minutes or 1.5 hours the amount of mileage can only increase and never and can never decrease the flat part of the slope is where the truck they stop while out on the delivery and the time is still passing by. Next one, nine. All right, this one, all right. All I could see here is the domain is discrete and the slope is decreasing, right? I can't really say much here. The answer in the book says it's the oven heat where baking cookies. That answer makes no sense, okay? So. 10 this is de um, discrete and the slope looks like it's increasing right 
So the uh, the contextual description was watermelon D watermelons are delivered to a farmer's market every single Saturday. The numbers of watermelon available for sale on Thursday. All right. The reason why is the watermelons are discrete because the watermelons are finite object. Right. You can't have 0.5 of a watermelon. Right. The amount of watermelon for sale is going up uh, for each delivery made. Right. So right here more deliveries 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 here i think the reason why it dips here is because like um maybe some of it got spoiled right or some of them was already sold like so that's why there was a dip here then more delivery and more delivery okay uh, next one this one looks like it is continuous and the slope is decreasing and some parts looks flat i would say that it will see the amount of gasoline on hand at the gas station before a tanker truck delivers more the reason why is because gasoline is continuous because you could have 1.5 gallons of it the slope is decreasing because drivers are coming in and taking gasoline out of the tank at the gas station the flat part of the slope is where there's no drivers at the gas station so the gas at the gas station remains constant okay. and that looks good next they say Give the pair of graphs on each coordinate grid creates a list of similarities, um, the two graphs share, and a list of the differences, right? So here you go. That's the first one, number 12. I said similarities, both are more continuous. The slope is both negative, they're going down. Uh, the end behaviors are that they're both tending towards decreasing because, again, they have that negative slope. Some differences. Uh, one is linear, the other one's exponential. Both the range and domain looks completely different, and the x and y intercepts are completely different. 13. All right, some similarities. Positive slope looks like they have the same slope, so it looks like they're parallel lines. Their end behaviors are the same. They're both tending upwards or increasing because they have that positive slope. And they look linear. Okay. Uh, some differences. One is continuous. One is discrete. The, this one is continuous. This one is discrete. Uh, the, they have different ranges and domains. And the x-intercept and y-intercepts are completely different. All right. And there you go. Those are two. And the go part now. All right. It says for each equation, find the value of x that makes it true. Sure, you're basically just solving for it. All right, so 10x equals to 100,000. Okay, this is the way the book wants you to answer it, I guess, it, I assume, is guessing and checking. In reality, when you go into higher mathematics, there's a function called log that you're supposed to be doing. Like when you're trying to find the exponent of something, you're using something called log. So let me show it to you. In your calculator, all you have to put is typed in is log of 10,000 is going to be equal to 5. What does that 5 mean? It means that the exponent up here is 5. So x equals to 5. Okay? That's it. You could guess and check or you can use log for discovering what the missing exponent is. All right? 15. All right? Two linear equations. 3x plus 7 equals 5x minus 21 so you move the smallest variable first so I subtract the 3x I get 7 equals 2x minus 21 now move the constant so I add 21 to both sides 20 equals to 2x now I try to get the coefficient equal to 1 so I divide by 2 to both sides then I get x equals to 14 16. Again, negative 6x minus 15 equals 4x plus 35. I want to move the smallest variable, which is negative 6x. So I'm going to add 6x to both sides. This is what it looks like after you simplify. Now when you move the constant, so I'm going to subtract 35 to both sides. I get negative 50 equals to 10x. I now want to make the coefficient or the, the number in front of the x equals to 1. So I'm going to divide by 10 to both sides. I get x equals to negative 5. 17, 5x minus 8 equals to 37. I notice that the variables are already combined, so I move on to the next step. I want to move the smallest constant, which is a minus 8, so I'm going to add 8 to both sides. In that process, I get 5x equals to 45. I have to make now the coefficient equal to 1. Divide 5 to both sides, I get x equals to 9. 
Next, a 3 to the exponent of x equals to 21. Again, when I'm trying to find a missing exponent, I use log. So I put in log. The base here is 3, and it's 81 equals to 4. So 4, 3 to the fourth power is 81. So x equals to 4. Next, 3x minus 12 equals negative 4x plus 23. Again, first part, move the smallest variable, which is your negative 4x, by adding 4x to both sides. That's what it looks like when it simplifies. 7x minus 12 equals to 23. Move the smallest constant now, which is the minus 12. I'm going to add 12 to both sides. Simplifies to get 7x equals to 35. I now want to make the coefficient equal to 1 by dividing 7 to both sides. Once I do that, I get x equals to 5. Okay. I think I didn't type it, but that should be x equals to 5. Okay. 20, 10 equals to 2 to the power of x minus 22. Again, you want to move the, there's only one variable. You're fine. Now move the constants. Add 22 to both sides. I get 32 equals to 2 to the power of x. Again, when it's to the exponent of a variable, I use log. I use log 32 base of 2 equals to 5. What that means is 2 to the fifth power equals to 32. So x equals to 5. 21. 243 equals 8x plus 3. Subtract 3 to both sides. 240 equals to 8. Divide 8 to both sides. I get x equals to 30. 22. 5x minus 7 equals to 118. Plus 7 to both sides because... You're trying to get the variable alone. Now you get 5x equals to 125. Notice the variable again is the exponent. So I'm going to log it. So I'm, it's going to be log of base 5 of 125 equals to 3. What that means is 5 to the power of 3 equals to 125. That means x equals to 3. All right, there you go. Those are all your homework solutions for 3.1.